Today on Topics in Radiography, I'm going to walk you through everything that needs to be done prior to the patient coming into the room. That includes all the supplies needed, contrast you might need depending on the type of exam you're doing, x-ray equipment settings, lead shielding, and of course, getting your questionnaires for the patient ready. All right, you're working hard at the hospital one day and you find out you've got 15 minutes before your upper GI patient shows up. Maybe you've done a few of them, maybe you're not quite comfortable yet, but there's not really anyone around to help you out. Until you have a lot of experience with these exams, the setup itself prior to the patient coming into the room can be quite daunting, especially if there's no one around to help you out if you have questions. Don't worry though, 10 to 15 minutes is plenty of time to set up for everything you need. Let's just go through a mental checklist of everything you'll need prior to the patient even coming in the room. So obviously you're going to need contrast media. Make sure when you're pulling it off the counter that you're checking the expiration dates so that you're not giving anything outdated. Pull up a mayo stand or some kind of rolling table if you have it. You'll need something to set up all your supplies on, preferably something with wheels. It just needs to be mobile so that you can move it around the room during the various stages of the exam so that it can be at arm's reach at all times. Now I'm choosing an order of supply setup that I'm comfortable with, but depending on the exam and the radiologist you're working with, this might vary, as well as the specific supplies you might need. So from right to left, I usually set out the easy gas first. I don't open the packet until the patient gets there. Then I'll pull out some drinking cups. I usually add about an ounce of water in the first one for when I'm ready to use the crystals in. Get out your thick barium, only needed for double contrast studies. Then your thin barium goes next. These are used for single and double contrast exams, so if it's single contrast, you probably won't need the thick barium in addition. Gastrographin or gastroview or any other type of water-soluble contrast you might need based on what your department uses. Another cup for some water. Definitely have a couple straws available as well. You'll need one for the barium and for the water if the radiologist is going to have the patient drink water. I also like to have a barium tablet ready. Chances are you may not need it, but if the doctor decides maybe there's a stricture in the esophagus and wants to use one, you don't want to have to run around looking for it in the middle of the exam. And obviously a patient gown would be needed. Other items I might suggest having are a wash rag and a towel, just in case things get messy. You never know if they're going to spill. Next, you want to set up your x-ray equipment. If your hospital or clinic requires a scout image, you need to make sure that your equipment allows you to take that with the fluoro equipment already set up. If not, just set up for your scout and then move on to the fluoro equipment later. I always start out by installing the footboard. And then always, always, always test the footboard prior to putting your patient on it. If your table has handles for the patient to grab, make sure to put those on as well. Once those are attached, tilt the table to the upright position. If your tilt table controls aren't working, make sure your x-ray tube is parked and try undocking the image intensifier. Some machines have safety precautions built in that won't let you move the table until one or both of those things are complete. And always make sure your bucky tray is down at the foot end of the table. I know you've already tested the footboard with your hands, but I always walk on the footboard to test it with my body weight prior to putting the patient there. The lead curtain should also be attached for this type of exam. Now you need to assure that the appropriate patient demographics and exam type are in your fluoro display. You can select the appropriate number of frames per second that the radiologist performing your exam would prefer to start out with. Most typically want it set to a single spot image, but be prepared to change that during the examination. Then make sure your control panel is set to fluoroscopy. Your technical factors might look a little off here, but just know that it's going to auto-adjust once the fluoroscope is turned on. Next, you want to have some lead aprons available. Make sure you have one in the room that fits you. You don't necessarily have to put it on right now, but just make sure you have one available that fits. 
You'll also need one for the radiologist and have a lap shield handy for any potential overheads the doctor might order after the exam is done. Let's talk about contrast documentation. This is something that's often overlooked in a lot of radiology departments, but I prefer to write down the lot numbers and expiration dates of each before the patient even walks in the room. That way all you need to do when the exam's done is take a quick assessment of how much contrast was consumed and then document the quantity by the lot number and the expiration dates for each. Plus, it's a second opportunity to ensure that the contrast isn't expired and that you've got the correct type of contrast. Next, you'll want to organize the equipment. You always want to pull the fluoro pedal out so the radiologist has access to it, but just be careful not to pull it out too far so that the patient might step on it accidentally. You're going to want to move your tray of supplies into reach so you don't have to walk to exchange items during the exam. And then pull the fluoro monitor close so the radiologist can easily see it while operating the fluoroscope with one hand. Pro tip here, make sure it's clear of the table so that when the radiologist tilts the table down, it doesn't go on top of the fluoro monitor. So before retrieving the patient, a few things you need to remember. Double check that your physician's order matches the requisition for the exam. Check the patient demographics to see what age and sex the patient is so you can determine what kind of pre-exam questions you're going to be asking them. Look at the patient's medical history. If you have images, look at those. This is so you can let the radiologist know there might be previous exams for comparison. And it might point you to some particular pathology that might point you towards some specific directions you might be going during the exam. Make sure you have a list of questions ready for your patient. If you don't have a preset list of questions, consider creating your own and have them available for your department. I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but this is going to become routine, routine, routine. The longer you do this, the easier it will get. Just remember, patient safety is our number one goal. If you aren't set up for the patient prior to the patient coming into the room, you're not going to be as efficient during the exam itself. And having all of these things prepared in advance will portray a level of professionalism to both the patient and the radiologist that you're working with. Imagine if the patient walked into the room and you took 10 minutes while they're sitting there bored before you start setting all this stuff up. Or if you just started asking them the questions while you were setting up, there's chance for distraction that might make you miss some important information. Or you might call the radiologist into the exam room and they walk in ready to go and you're still fumbling around with your equipment or supplies. They're gonna look at you kind of funny. Trust me, I've done this. I've got another pro tip for you. If you work with a bunch of different radiologists, document all of the variations that you're seeing between them and then make a list for your whole radiology department to benefit from. Check with your coworkers. Somebody may have already done this for you, but in my recent experience, it's not a very common thing to have available in the department. If you do have one, check it for accuracy to make sure it's up to date and updated if needed. I hope these tips have helped. If you've liked this video and want to see more content, make sure to click subscribe and the button down below and give me a thumbs up. I'm always open to suggestions for more videos. Thanks.